Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for attending the presentation. Today we're going to talk about uh, the use of ozone for cyanide destruction. Cyanide um, discharge into the environment has become an issue. Uh, mines are looking at uh, multiple different levels of discharge um, or different sources of discharge for cyanide into the environment from tailings to process waters to scrubbing, scrubbing liquors. The current processes that are around all have one inherent problem, is that they generate a secondary effluent that then needs to be treated, or they concentrate up the cyanide to a level which is then, uh, again, dangerous for discharge. The concept of using ozone is, uh, is to actually oxidize the cyanide. So let's talk about quickly what is ozone for the people that don't know. Ozone is a triatomic form of oxygen, so it's O3. It's generated through a corona discharge, which is a high-intensity electrical current, which excites the ozone uh, oxygen molecules till they separate and form the O3 uh, molecule that you can see there. Highly reactive, um, a nice blue color that you won't really see unless you're actually looking inside the generator, with a very distinctive smell. And once you've smelt ozone, you will know it. You can pick it up at parts per billion level. Uh, very short half-life. And the beauty of this is that there is no secondary pollution level. Ozone breaks down back into oxygen, which is a benefit to the environment. You're looking at about uh, 25 minutes in, in water and about uh, up to 12 hours uh, in clean air. Interesting one, it's non-combustible, however it supports combustion. So if you write, light a match in a room full of ozone, it's not going to explode. All that will happen is your match will just burn a bit quicker, a bit brighter. And it's one of the most uh, powerful oxidants that is available for uh, people to actually use on a process form. As I said, it's generated through a discharge gap. So you've got uh, electrodes where you're passing a stream of oxygen through uh, with a high intensity electric current, separating the oxygen molecules to form O3. You're only forming about 10 to 12% uh, ozone in an oxygen stream. Um, you can't you don't really want to go much more than that. At about 16%, ozone starts becoming a bit explosive. So why use it? Because it's a powerful oxidant, it oxidizes all of your cyanates and cyanides. Uh, a lot of your sad cyanides as well as your white cyanides are, are, are oxidized. It's a very, very rapid reaction. Uh, as fast as you can dissolve the ozone into solution, you will start reacting with cyanide to cyanate. And then cyanates and thiocyanates are also oxidized um, back. Uh, the, your thiocyanates are oxidized to, to cyanide, and your cyanates eventually to ammonia or CO2. We'll get into that a bit later. The main beauty, though, is that you're not forming any secondary pollution levels or, or loads that then need to be treated further. When you're using things like ferrous ferrous sulfate uh, or chlorine, chlorine uh, um, byproducts, you end up creating chlorinated cyanides and other uh, very harmful um, or toxic elements. It's also a purely on-site technology. So because you cannot transport or store ozone, you have to generate it on-site. So it's very easy to generate. You can either use uh, locks, like in, in this potential here, where you've got a liquid oxygen tank, or you can use an oxygen generation system to generate oxygen and pass it then through your ozone generator. So all your requirement on site then is power. Power and cooling water and you can generate uh, ozone. Very low maintenance and very labor, uh, minimal labor usage and simple operation. We can go from uh, zero operation to 100% capacity of ozone in less than about a minute, minute and a half for your bigger, bigger generators. Switching on, switching off is just as fast with a turn down ratio of uh, 100 down to about 10%. So very flexible on your sizing and, and control operation. The key things then is, well, what does this stuff cost? In order to generate a kilogram of oxygen, you require 8.3 kilograms of oxygen and uh, 10 kilowatts of power. So if you know, if, if you're using LOX, you use 8 kilograms, um, 8 kilograms of oxygen. If you're using a VSA system, you'll use, again, just more power. So your 10 kilowatt will then be 12.24 kilowatt. So if you know your power costs, you know your ozone generation costs. There are no other hidden costs in the, in the process. So uh, then on top of that, you have six, seven kilograms of oxygen coming off the process, which can be used elsewhere. Uh, for, for example, in the gold mining industry, you can put it into um, oxidation, um, cyanide, your reaction tanks. So an all-in installed cost then uh, in South Africa, running on, on uh, 1.32 a kilowatt for power, 
you're looking at between 20 and 60 rand per kilogram for ozone. The higher the ozone cost is generally for your lower ozone usage. The ozone generation systems, uh, the bigger you go, the cheaper it gets. It's much easier. You very much have the same equipment for the large generators as you do for the smaller ones. So your per kilogram cost of ozone comes down with the larger uh, generation size. So the chemistry, we'll just quickly gloss over what, uh, what's involved. One mole of ozone reacts with one mole of cyanide uh, to produce cyanate. This reaction is very, very fast. The second reaction, cyanate um, to bicarb and nitrogen, is, it's much longer, it takes about 20 minutes. Although it's not really necessary because cyanate is about 100,000 well, times less toxic than cyanide and is generally allowed to be discharged into the environment. There's also a much uh, an easier natural process of breakdown of cyanate then um, to ammonia um, and other, other compounds. So you don't have to go all the way through uh, to cyanate. The other reaction is with thiocyanate. Thiocyanate is oxidized back to cyanide and then uh, you can react it further. This, this reaction gives you the possibility of recycling cyanide in the gold mines. You can then uh, take your thiocyanate solutions, react it with ozone, the reaction uh, with thiocyanate is preferential to the other cyanides anyway, so what happens is add ozone to your solution, oxidize your thiocyanates, you can control the reaction on ORP basis, and then you can regenerate your cyanide, which can go back into, uh, into process. Ozone does not oxidize your ferro ferrocyanate uh, compounds. However, if you combine it with a UV system, uh, so an ozone and UV combination system, you can then oxidize these compounds. So it, isn't, it is possible, but then you just need an uh, additional step. So on experimental and through, through chemistry, two grams of ozone destroys one gram of cyanide to cyanate. So we just touch on uh, two case studies that were held here in South Africa. The first one is an industrial site that had a flue gas uh, scrubber system that was generating cyanide in large quantities. They were treating the cyanide with a uh, ferrous sulfate solution, but that did not allow them to recycle the effluent and they had to discharge, which then is again a problem because now you're discharging the, the ferrous cyanide uh, complexes. We installed a batch system um, on the site and uh, ran the system successfully, uh, reducing the cyanide levels down to uh, less than 5 ppm. I can just show you a, a graph of the reaction. This is your ORP uh, portion. You can see as the cyanide dis disappears out of solution, your ORP level climbs, and you can actually use an ORP control mechanism to control your dosing of ozone. So very, very simple to control um, and very accurate. At, once the cyanide is depleted, your ORP levels are stabilized, and you can actually know that your solution that you're discharging is less than 5 ppm cyanide. What's also interesting on this graph is you can see the uh, thiocyanide levels drop while your cyanide levels increase initially, while you're oxidizing your thiocyanide, and then you get your tail off um, on the reaction. The sizing of the system is pretty much how much ozone you can dissolve in the, in the solution. Um, the more the, the, the reaction rate is limited only by the amount of ozone that you can dissolve in water at, at one time. In this system, we ended up running at about 3.2 grams of ozone per gram of cyanide destroyed but that's because of the uh, thiocyanate that was present in the solution. The second case study was on an operating gold mine. They were looking uh, at sending the uh, tailings back to underground as backfill and then the fine material was being sent to surface treatment. They were treating the effluent uh, with ferrous again. However, they were then introducing your sulfides underground and they ran the risk of um, mine water coming into contact with contaminated uh, backfill material and generating cyanide in the, in the stopes, which is obviously a bit of a dangerous mechanism. So in order to um, try and avoid this, they looked at alternate methods of treating the cyanide and we ran a su very successful trial running with, with ozone. We found it to be extremely effective uh, against all of the cyanide complexes that were present in the, golding, in the gold um, solution. Uh, it didn't form any undesirable side products, so they were able to discharge the water underground without introducing uh, your sulfites or, or secondary pollutants. Uh, there were no off-gas issues. Uh, the pH doesn't change in the system, so you don't have to change any pH at all. 
you're not uh, adding any acids or anything else, so you're not generating any harmful bi uh, like HCN gas or any other harmful gases. And you can then effectively send that product back underground as a safe backfill uh, solution. The other one which is becoming more and more of an issue in people's lives is then the handling and, and dealing of ca hazardous chemicals on your site. You now have a sealed container which operates almost uh, personnel free, operating on the side of your site. There's no handling or, or moving of chemicals. There's no uh, deliveries or uh, other unexpected costs in terms of having chemicals on your site. You have a simple on-site operation. The ox, the ox, as I said, the uh, reaction doesn't require any change in process. So you don't have to heat up solutions or, or cool down solutions. You don't have to change pHs. You can inject the ozone directly into your tailings. Um, and it's, the chemistry is, um, is fast enough so that it's, it's, um, there's no other changes required. You have a potential water savings because now you can recycle water back into your process without adding other chemical loads. And at this trial, it ran at uh, less than 10 rand per ton of ore that was finally treated was the costing of the, of the process. So quite economical process too. And that's pretty much, uh, uh, thanks for your attention. We look forward to uh, answering any of your questions on, on cyanide destruction.